Hello and welcome to another episode of Eat Smoke Drink. Today is part two of the Springbank Rundlet and Kildurkin lineup um, series that I have for you. Um, thank you for joining me. So you must have seen my last um, review of the Rundlet and Kildurkin Hazelburn. If you have not, um, hey, watch that first because that's just the start of the progression. We're doing Hazelburn, Springbank and Long Row. So this is now the Springbank. Um, I'm very excited. Springbank is my favorite distillery known to man. And look at the color of that. Um, if you haven't seen the, um, the first one, just a quick background, Rundlet and Kildurkin. Um, it's usually intended for beer and wine. Okay, so um, the barrels are usually intended for beer and wine. They are more porous, so they have a very unique um, influence on the spirit. And um, having the Springbank Dunnage Warehousing as well over 10 to 11 years, then you will have a lot of that Dunnage in part, probably more so than others in theory. Um, but nonetheless, the barrel itself um, is not normal to be used in whiskies, and so this is what makes these very special. And they are very renowned for their awesomeness and amazeballsness. Uh, so um, here we go. So let's get nosing the Springbank, um, and here's to part two of Rundlet and Kildurkin series. Let's get nosing. Oh, moly. That is absolutely glorious. So freshly opened bottle first neck pour so it's going to be tight so I'm going to just take my time nosing it please bear with me and try to um, live vicariously through my nosing <sighs> wow that's a very unique spring bank extremely unique spring bank 49.4 percent for a young whiskey um, well when I say young I mean about 11 years old not a bad ABV. Straight away from the get-go, extremely herbal, extremely medicinal. The dunnage is very confronting. So definitely, definitely the dunnage comes through a lot there. The dinginess, that, that foosty, that foosty smell. It's quite a bizarre smell. It's very herbal, very um, medicinal, but it's also got like a sickly syrupy sweetness as well almost like a, a treacle but that is glorious a waft of smoke in the background there a waft of peat a waft of smoke now they're not heavily peated it could be residual peat within the kilns um it could be maybe you know obviously it's a small batch and they're very old-fashioned so you know it's going to be inconsistent batch to batch but there's definitely a waft of peat in there now when you knows that this is what's interesting When I nose it, I get a menthol smell on all over my, my, my nose there, like a lingering menthol. It's more so in this than the Hazelburn. I don't know where that's coming from, but the Hazelburn had a menthol smell as well in the palette, but this has that menthol a little bit more. But this one has a very, very distinct earthiness to it. A very distinct earthiness, much greater umami I'm getting um, a dry shiitake mushroom soaked in a bowl of water you know when you do some Chinese cooking you get shiitake mushrooms you put it in a bowl of water and then you touch it and then your hand smells of that um, water coming from that mushroom that I'm getting that fungal smell very very umami oh wow absolutely ridiculous that is an exceptionally unique smelling spring bank. I'm getting leather, an old, old dried leather that's been wet. So, so you know, like you get an old leather that and then it gets wet. So not freshly tanned leather, very mild smelling leather. Oh, wow brown sugar syrup um, treacle I'm getting a slight aniseed peppermint I'm getting an umami of dark stuck in mushrooms a fungal nut foosty very foosty earthiness of maybe like a cola root a slight spice like a like a cinnamon
Oh, absolutely delicious. I, I, I just want to keep nosing it. And the more I nose it, the more it reveals as well. Oh man. Absolutely delicious. Let's get tasting. Let's get the can't nose it forever. Oh wow. The palate is much cleaner than the nose. The nose is much funkier. The nose is much more savory and dirty and strange. But the palate hits you with a sharp sweetness and then quickly subsides um, and makes way for herbal. Herbal. The slight savoriness, the umami of the mushroom is definitely there. Slightly drying on the palate. Mmm. Definitely the herbal and medicinal note is there. The oak is not very forward. The oak is quite tame and mellow. I'm getting some cinnamon. No menthol. But quite a savory dram. I'm getting some salinity in there as well. But quite a savory dram. Fungal, mushroomy, um, leathery. Almost a bit like a... Like chewing on unlit tobacco. Unlit cigars. Absolutely glorious. And it's very drying. So I'm not sure what was in the barrels beforehand, but um, I am getting that savoriness, the similar savoriness note from um, Hazelburn. That's delicious. Absolutely outstanding. Wow. Oh. Mm, I'm getting... Um, the last sip, it's opened up a bit more. I'm getting condensed berry jam um, mixed with a herbal aniseed savoriness. I'm getting wet earth. I'm getting leaves when you go in the forest and go for a walk, that leafy leaf litter. Um, a hint of smoke, that is absolutely glorious, absolutely exciting, and I would. I would do dirty and filthy things to get another bottle of this. Um, absolutely glorious. Oh, so glorious. Thank you very much for joining me today. See you in the next episode when I review the Hazelburn. Ah, oh, sorry, Hazelburn. When I review the Runlet and Kildurkin Long Row, um, which is the heavily peated version of Springbank. I'm excited for that. I put that last because it is peated. Cheers, and until next time, make sure you eat, smoke, drink.